So, waiting for my steak to rest. Having a picanha with some broccoli. And it's already been resting for about five minutes, so I don't want this video to be too long, although it's been a bit since I've done one. And I am planning on doing the $4, now they're $4 Trader Joe's tasting, probably sometime soon. And opening something I've never had before. I've had a Gatanara before. Gatanara is a region in Piedmont, also specializes in Nebbiolo, this is 100% Nebbiolo. And normally they're a little bit more of a bargain than Barolo Barbaresco, but in this case, this was about the same price as Barolo Barbaresco. I'm pretty sure this was $50 or $60. This is Conterno, though, which is a very good producer. This is a 2016. I probably should have decanted this. I did not. I'm just popping and pouring, which is doing this one a bit of a disservice. I have some decanted that I will have over the course of the night. But for now, I'm going to have this wine here. And definitely could use some more decanting, but it is what it is. I guess I'll let it sit for a few minutes and talk about a few wines I've had recently. I had Grillo, a New Jersey Grillo. And it's typically made, I think, in... Well, it's definitely Italy. I'm not sure if it's just Sicily. But anyway, it was decent. Uh, it was better at the winery in Cape May than it is than I had it now. Maybe just what I paired it with. It kind of had a yeasty beer taste, which was weird. It wasn't sparkling, but it reminded me of a beer, which... don't know that I've... Besides having some orange wines that reminded me of a sour... This was a little bit unique. It wasn't bad. I just thought it'd be a little different, and it didn't pair great. And I think I had sushi that night, so it didn't pair great with the sushi. Probably would have paired better with some other cuisines. Uh, I opened up a Mount Etna Red yesterday. I still, Mount Etna, Norella Mescalese is a great pairing with salmon and pork. It's, it's just a fantastic wine. And this was a $25 one. The $20, $25 ones are fantastic value for the money. Lighter wine, alternative Pinot Noir, fantastic. I forget which one I had, Altamora or something. It doesn't really matter. It's in the other room. I'm not going to go grab it now, but very good wine as well. I have a more Obsidian coming. They did two funky sparklers. I'll do the unboxing when I get them. Scarecrow's email came in. We'll see if I actually get Scarecrow this year, the 2019. 100 point rated by Robert Parker's Wine Advocate, although Robert Parker is retired, but his name lives on and his company lives on for rating wines. And I'm trying to think of some other wines I've had recently. I'd have to check my Vivino. I had a Mavedra from Carlisle, which was decent. Nothing fantastic. Decent. So, let's see. This isn't screaming... The normal Nebbiolo that I get out of Barolo Barbaresco, which is tar, roses, fresh strawberries. I all, Those three always bring me to Piedmont, Barbarello, yeah, Bar Barolo Barbaresco. This definitely has a freshness to it. Starting to get a little bit of cherry and strawberry. Fresh cherry and strawberry. Not overripe, not underripe, just sort of right. No tar, no tar floral, but not roses. This would fool me, for sure. The color, absolutely, it, it reminds me of Nebbiolo. That would be a giveaway to me, almost as a browning to the edge here. But the aromas are throwing me right now. Let's see if the ten, tannin structure is, and the tannin and acid is in line with what Nebbiolo normally brings in Piedmont, especially in Barolo Barbaresco. Very, acid's definitely there. Tannins are a little softer than Barolo Barbaresco, but the, tan, the, the acid is absolutely there. So medium plus acid, I say tannins are medium, medium minus. Not big, big tannin like I'm usually expecting. This is a 2016, and this isn't a reserver or anything, or anything specific that I know. I didn't do any research on this. 14% alcohol. Tastes a little higher than that, although 
I think this wine's going to evolve. I think this wine absolutely is a wine that deserves a good hour in the decanter. So I'll definitely do an update on this. It's got an earthiness to it. It's got like a dry fruit. warming it's it tastes warm like a, like higher alcohol than 14 percent it's got like a dried strawberry and a dry cherry type of type of taste the acid and, and tannin exactly where i said pomegranate cranberry some tart red fruit that, that's kind of what i'm getting a little tart red fruit no tar it's a tart no tar or roses so surprising there. I, I, I don't know that I would guess. I don't know what I would guess, honestly. Definitely not got to Nara. But I don't think I'd go Barolo Barbaresco either. So who knows? Doesn't really matter. Not blind tasting this or anything. I'm just going to have it with my steak. I don't think this is a perfect pairing for steak, but it's what I've opened. I don't really want to open anything else. That means that I have two open wines. Don't really like having three. Right now, definitely not worth the money. Never had this wine before from this producer. It was Nervi Conterno. Yeah, a little bit disappointing for the price. It's not bad, of course. It's just, I guess I expected more. More complexity. Uh, more tannin. Not that... I expected more time just just as a, because it doesn't have it. I guess I just expected more, just more complexity maybe. The length's decent. It's a little warming. So we'll see. See what happens after it decants a little bit. Well, time to eat. <laughs>